now do the chums. Today I'm looking at the Dragon's Dogma 2 official release trailer featuring Ian McShane. This has been put up by IGN. Hopefully I'm not going to get flagged. First thing I noticed, this is for mature audiences, 17 plus. Okay, so it has actually had the age certificate rating and I feel that's aptly placed. So here we go, let's hit on play. Behold, a world touched by magic. A symphony of myth and reality. An everlasting saga of hearts set ablaze. Lend me a moment and I'll tell you a story of a fantastical realm. For untold eons, a dragon has plagued the world. Its ominous shadow looms over the lands, a dreadful creature of chaos and awe, with tales of its cruelty echoing far and wide. No mortal would dare to dream of challenging the dragon in single combat, yet there is one who <laughs> must. In a legendary tale doomed to repeat across the ages, the dragon chooses a worthy champion from each generation. Wrenching the beating heart from their chest and forging a being known as the Arisen. This hero, marked by fate and burdened by their lost humanity, must rise from the trappings of ordinary life and answer the call to take up arms in search of the dragon who stole their heart. But the path of the Arisen is not a solitary journey, for they are granted access to the rift, the thread connecting worlds. I see you recognize my word, Arisen. Where they can summon mystical beings from parallel realities, the loyal and hard-working pawns, masters of archery, Wielders of potent spells and skilled in the arts of swordplay and melee. The pawns become the Arisen's companions and confidants. I hope you slept well, Master. As they go forth on their journey together. Okay, so that first part with the heroes and the pawns and all that sort of shenanigans, pretty darn freaking awesome stuff. I mean, it's fairly much on par with what we've seen in previous outing inside of Dragon's Dogma, the first Dragon's Dogma. But yeah, uh, it, it all looks okay. I mean, I would say, watching this video footage, I did see a couple of frame drops, I'm not going to lie. It, it, and also, graphically, it's come on a little from the first one, but I wouldn't say it's like massively, massively, vastly improved. But anyway, let's let's hit play again, people. In pursuit of the beckoning dragon, the Arisen and their pawns set foot across two nations as disparate in terrain as they are in their ways of life. In Vermont, a fertile land cradled by alpine peaks and rolling hills, the fortress city stands as a bastion of prosperity and security. Cascading waterfalls and serpentine rivers flow throughout the countryside, feeding into fruitful farms where a feeling of abundance permeates the fresh air. Just above the capital city, Vernworth Palace rises proudly. You are approaching the gates of Vernworth. Here, the Arisen is traditionally revered as the Sovereign, a monarch crowned by destiny and looked upon as a champion, protecting the land from the dragon's scourge. Beyond Vermin's verdant embrace lies Batal, the nation of Bistran, a land of unforgiving deserts, its shifting sands, and jagged canyons require creative thinking to traverse, with gondolas <laughs> connecting precarious outposts. Here, the Arisen is not an esteemed sovereign, but an outsider. Their pawn companions believed to be a source of grave misfortune. 
Patal's rulers are not of human lineage, but rather Bistran priestesses who worship the lambent flame. For the Bistran believe its sacred fires shield them from the calamity of the dragon. Meanwhile, outside the reaches of human and Bistran, hidden within the depths of the forest, an ancient sect of elves resides in seclusion, speaking in a tongue known only to them. Cool. and avoiding contact with other races. On their journey, the Arisen will navigate through conflicts between species and the complexities of culture, faith, and history in each land. The choices the Arisen makes will shape <laughs> not only their future and that of those with whom they interact, but the future of the world itself. Well, I really like that. I mean, in the first Outland and Dragon's Dogma, there was really just human races. The fact that we've now got elves and Bistron added into this, and the elves even speak their own tongue, and the cities and their actual race and the culture seems to be vastly different from one another. Yeah, this adds a whole new dimension to the first Outland of Dragon's Dogma. Bring it on! Something I noticed there is when the goblins jumped out, they all had like face paint on. They looked like they were sort of camouflage with the shrubberies the shrubberies <laughs> yeah awesome anyway this part will probably be my favorite part the monsters the arisen's odyssey is fraught with peril for the world is home not only to human and beastron but to all manner of monsters hungering to defeat <laughs> the hero and their pawns <laughs> Each Aww. step of the way is marked with blood awesome. and sweat shed in the face of relentless adversaries. I guess. The harrowing shrieks of harpies reverberate through the mountains and canyons. Cool. Resourceful goblins lurk in the shadows, skillfully ah. adapting to the terrain and waiting to they ambush. They do have groups. camouflage ambushes. The footsteps of lumbering golems animated by powerful charms shake cool. the earth and rattle the arisen's bones glad they're still and in it when the sun sets up we get we can expect a busy night skeletons ghosts cool. and undead rise from their slumber <laughs> a single undead murmuring to itself adrift in memories of its living past is a haunting sight but a horde of undead, united yeah. in a mindless nocturnal frenzy, is a truly nightmarish test of metal. There used to be a fat one, and when you set them on fire, it exploded. Are monsters most only see in myths. Cool. The Minotaur's trampling hooves. Oh, the Minotaur's looks the far Medusa better. The Medusa with its petrifying gaze. She's new! And the Dullahan's ghastly severed head. Cool. will strike fear in even the most stout-hearted. Yeah, With every exhilarating oh. encounter, the hero must think creatively. It will take oh, cleverness, cool. as well as courage, to conquer the three heads of the Chimera, slay the soaring griffin, and overpower the bronze giant, Talos. He's new! Each victory emboldens the arisen spirit and prepares them for the inevitable showdown with the indomitable dragon. Cool. The culmination of both their destinies. Welcome to Dragon's Dogma 2. Oh yes, bring it on! Okay, well I'm just gonna put that back to the start. And I'm going to chuck me over onto the here. The monsters, by far, are the main reason I play this game. I'm not going to lie. And I freaking find them awesome. Tracking them down, hunting them, killing them, whatever. Uh, I mean, that's not really the main aspect of this. This isn't Monster Hunter World, by any stretch of the imagination. And this looks far more open worldy. I didn't see any sort of loading scenes or things like that. But then again, are they going to put those in the trailer? No. So we, we've got to see what actually happens. Is it completely seamless as you enter into cities? In the old one, 
No, as you hit the castle gate, it will load you into the actual next scene and into the city. So it'd be nice to see if you can actually just go from outside the city into the city. Now, I have seen footage with a player that upsets a griffin, runs into the city, and the griffin follows them into the city, and a load of actual NPCs actually join in the fray. So I'm going to say it might be seamless. I don't know whether there are going to be individual sort of cutscenes. Maybe if you go into a dungeon, perhaps, or something like that, or a sewer system or something. But we'll see. We'll see if there is any loading scenes. Not that it's going to make a massive great difference to anything. Now, inside of this trailer, I've seen textures that look beautiful. And I've seen textures that look pretty janky. So a lot of it looks really nice, doesn't it? I mean, yeah, looks great. But there are some of this that it doesn't look like it's really evolved much from the first Dragon's Dogma. But I would say the first Dragon's Dogma was ahead of its time. It's not quite on par with, say, Red Dead for the level of complexity and detail, but it's quite close to that. The very original first Dragon's Dogma, if you picked it up today and started playing it, you're going to like it. Because it still looks fairly current, a little bit like, say, Red Dead. You know, so anyway... I digress. That's as cheap as chips right now, the very first Dragon's Dogma. If you haven't played it and you're liking the look of what's happening behind me right now, Dragon's Dogma 2 is, is pretty much this. The only thing that Dragon's Dogma 1 hasn't got that, I, that I'm not seeing here is um, the races, you know, like the, the Beastrin and the Elves. That's just a human race, basically, in the first one. But it, it's brilliant. Something I'm not seeing is this campsite thing. I mean, we didn't have that in Dragon's Dogma 1, so that's cool. Um, but I haven't seen the fast travel system inside of Dragon's Dogma 2. The old fast travel system, you had f fairy stones and port crystals. You put down your port crystal and you use a fairy stone to get to them. And you only had a limited amount of the port crystals that you could put in the world. So you had to place them strategically so you can fast travel to those points. I haven't seen any of the port crystals inside of any of the game footage so far. I did sneakily see a fairy stone being used though, so I can only but assume that perhaps that is still a system. Well, the fairy, the fairy crystals still are, but they're very expensive. Apparently you can travel by cart in this one as well, uh, which is a little bit slower, like you can see here, the travelling cart right now. I've also heard that you can stand on a griffin's back, but the griffin might throw you off and you might die. And that's another way to traverse the landscape, but who knows. Anyways, it's looking beautiful. I love the, the size of these places and the gravitas of these places look great. And it looks like we've seen various elements of CGI. But when I say CGI, it's not really CGI. The first Dragon's Dogma actually used the in-game engine to produce these little mini cutscenes, which are cinematic scenes, but in the game engine. And it looks like it's doing a mixture of the two of this. I'm seeing bits of CGI, but I'm also seeing some of that cin cinematic cutscene-y type stuff, which I think could work quite well to this. And I, I like that. That's a pretty cool. It looks like the world has been very fleshed out and very thought about and very sort of tailor-made and created and handcrafted. I'm not seeing anything inside of this that looks like it's procedural repetition. It looks beautiful. Every single aspect, every single shot looks beautiful in this game. Now, the first game had camera mode. So I'm hoping that they still have camera mode in this. I'd love to be able to take some pictures, share them out on social media. I mean, this area here, I thought looked a little bit dated. You know, the actual Beastrin area where they're doing all the prayers. I'm just being honest. It looks like it's from PlayStation 4 days, you know, or PlayStation 3 days even. Perhaps even worse than the original First Dragon's Dogma, graphically. But then, when we go to this Elf Kingdom, everything looks freaking awesome. I'm loving all the little moss bits and all that sort of stuff. This thing I'm liking as well. It looks great in some places. In other places, it looks a little bit... Mm, okay, alright, it looks a little bit dated. But I'm hoping that that's not going to play too much into things. I'm fairly sure the fast-paced action is going to distract from any thoughts of bits and bobs that might be slightly rough around the edges. But I'm liking the look of this. I really am excited for this to come to my channel. The first Dragon's Dogma, I was hooked. It was freaking awesome, the first Dragon's Dogma. And this one looks like it's more of the same and then some. The fact they've added in a Medusa. God knows how you're going to take her out. Probably have to chop up her head or something. The fact that... Oh, oh, I love all the fur effects on all the creatures now. They've all got fur effects, which is great. That's been brought up a level. This little dragon here, he looks freaking epic. Hopefully we get to see more of that. 
In the first out in the Dragon's Dogma, you fall into the Everfall and you find some creatures that you don't find out in the world, like the Eye of the Beholder and um, some other weird creatures down there. And you can refight the Hydra and all the sorts of monsters in little mini boss fights. I really hope they've got some sort of boss fighty type lair thing inside of this game because it is nice to be able to go to one place and pick your challenge, you know. After you manage to do it, it's kind of end game content, the Everfall in the first one. But not only that, we also had the Bitter Black Isle in the first one as well, which again was boss fight on top of boss fight with massive, mahusive versions of some bosses as well. Freaking craziness. So yeah, the first Dragon's Dogma was epic. This one is looking like it's got a lot of epic stuff in it. There's a lot of hidden creatures like the Sphinx. Apparently you can even complete the game without even encountering the Sphinx. I think I'm going to play through this game on the easiest mode, first of all. I did that with the first Dragon's Dogma. When you complete it, an easy mode, it unlocks a load of higher tier armour and weapons. And it goes into New Game Plus. Then I ramped it up to the hardest difficulty setting imaginable in the first one and completely platinumed the game. That's what I'm going to aim to do with this one. Play through on easy, get any New Game Plus perks... Hit it up in the hard mode and play through again. Now when I play through on easy mode, what I'm thinking of doing is just do the best bits. And do little mini player guides. Look what I found. This is where I found it. That sort of stuff. And then I think when I do the hard mode playthrough, hopefully by then a lot of people have already played through as well. And it's going to be less spoilery, you know. And I'll do a full playthrough in hard mode as I try to platinum the game. So that's my sort of... That's, that's what I'm going to be bringing to the channel. If you like the sounds of that, get yourself subscribed, get yourself locked in, and get yourself at my channel early doors. Heck yes, hit that notification bell. But yeah, 22nd of March is when I'm going to be hitting this up, and I'll probably do my first impressions live for the first hour in easy mode, so there might be a couple of early game spoilers there, but I'd imagine every content creator imaginable is going to be putting out content on day one. Anyway, people, that's everything I've got for you. Thank you very much for watching. Until next time, goodbye, goodbye, and goodbye again. Salute to Mondo. Cheerio, bye.